And good day to you, I'm Ryan, and the PlayStation 3 store is finally closing down. Rumours have been making their rounds on the internet for the last few weeks, and I was hoping they wouldn't turn out to be true, but from the 2nd of July the PS3 and PSP stores are closing down, and the PS Vita one will be joining them on the 27th of August. While that means you can't access the store or buy anything on those consoles anymore, you can still re-download everything that you own already, but who knows how long it'll be before they close that down as well. It's kinda has a domino effect for the whole PlayStation 3 library and for retro collecting as a whole, so I've broken the video into a few different sections going into detail about each one, and how it's affected by the store closures, because it's a little bit more complicated than just not being able to buy things anymore. One of the main reasons I bought a PlayStation 3 is because of the classics available on their store. At the minute, it still has all the best games for the PlayStation 1 for sale, like the Crash Bandicoot, Resident Evil and Final Fantasy franchises, and they're very reasonable in price compared to physical discs. They even have clear scans of the manuals that you can bring up while playing. For example, a physical copy of Resident Evil 3 would cost about £30, but you can get all three classic Resident Evils for that price as digital downloads on the store. They even have some of the more obscure games like Mega Man Legends and Clonoa, both incredible games that fetch insane prices now for physical discs. I've also done a video on both of those games, talking about why they're so rare and expensive, and in both, I recommended the PlayStation 3 Store is a good alternative to buying an actual disc. Another few highlights would be Future Cop LAPD, Legend of Dragoon, Vanguard Bandits and Legend of Mana, among many others, all of which are unreasonably expensive for people like me that just want to own and play them legally. The PlayStation 2 section is a little bit sparse, but there are some good games like Suikoden 3 and 4 as well as the Fatal Frame series, all at decent prices again. Buying from the PlayStation Store was not only cheaper, but it even helped the developers that made the game as buying second hand just lines for pockets of a reseller who thinks it's a good idea to sell a video game at £250. While retro gaming keeps rising in price as support for these online storefronts gets pulled like the Wii and Wii U stores, more people will be driven to emulation and ROMs, more people that would have bought these games for sale on a digital store. Closing the PlayStation 3 store means that digital versions of PlayStation 3 games won't be available anymore. I know that seems like a galaxy brain revelation, but right now physical PlayStation 3 games are still cheap because a lot of them are on the PlayStation store. Taking down one of the main ways to buy these games will make the prices of physical versions start increasing rapidly, and the rare games that cost about £30 at the moment will reach triple digits in no time. Resellers will most likely start snapping up as many physical copies as soon as they can while the price is low before the store closure, so if there's anything on your radar, as long as your finances allow it, it might be a good time to pick it up. That's only half of it though. Tons of PlayStation 3 games have DLC, and while I'm not too fussed about losing access to some random costumes I'll probably never use, the PlayStation 3 era still had pretty chunky DLC packs similar to the expansion packs of earlier years. Expanding stories and adding extra gameplay content. If a game doesn't have a remaster or a port that has the DLC, the store closing will make those games forever unfinished, just like the few Dreamcast games that had add-on packs on the Sega Online service years ago, with the only alternative being to emulate them. It's a similar issue for the PlayStation Network games, and while there's a lot of shovelware, there are a few titles which never got a physical release in some regions of the world. For example, Ratchet & Clank Future got a physical release in Europe but not in America, so their only way of getting the game is to import it or buy it from the network, while digital exclusives for every region, like Bomberman Ultra and Echo Chrome, will just disappear. Something very similar happened for Wii exclusives when its store closed down as well, and to think that an entire library of games, good and bad, could disappear overnight and never be experienced again is sad to me. Thankfully a group archived the whole Wii store, so hopefully someone does the same for the PlayStation 3. Because this video mainly covers the PlayStation 3 side of things, I'm not covering too much on the PlayStation Vita, but the situation's more or less the same over there. Unfortunately, a lot of developers are still making games for the Vita, who haven't received any notice at all from Sony that the storefront is going to be closing down until the same time the general public did. Which means all of their years of work on their games is now completely wasted because it won't release in time before the store closes down. When I found out that news, it made me think that the whole store closure thing is just a really rushed decision on Sony's part, and I'm not quite sure why they wouldn't give heads up to people who have been making games for their systems. So you've got a stack of games you've downloaded from the PS3 store, all your DLC is ready to roll, and you've got physical versions of everything else, so you should be fine, right? I mean, maybe? But then again, maybe not. The PlayStation 3 was made with internet access in mind and was built similarly to a desktop PC, kinda like modern consoles are. 
Inside, there's something like a motherboard. It has a CMOS battery. CMOS batteries for desktop or laptop motherboards mainly power the BIOS, which is needed for everything else to work. It helps store vital factory information and has a built-in clock to remember time even when powered off. These things do have a really long lifespan, but they'll eventually run out of power, causing some problems on the system they're a part of. Normally, it's not too much of an issue as you can just replace the battery and get back to normal, and when connected to the internet, the new battery will save an updated date and time. The PlayStation 3's battery works in a very similar way, but uses the PlayStation Network to keep its date and time up to date. When it's not connected to the internet, it uses the information on its hardware, which would be the PlayStation 3's manufacture date. The problem here starts with time-locked contents. Ever buy a new game and go to play it only to discover it unlocks at a certain date and time? And even if you change your clock, the game doesn't unlock any faster? A huge amount of the PlayStation 3's digital content uses this system, syncing the PlayStation Network to the console so it knows when to unlock the content. If the time ever went out of sync and the console couldn't connect to the PlayStation Network anymore, that digital content would stay locked forever. Suddenly, all of those digital games and the downloadable content is completely unplayable, and the only alternative is to hack your console or turn to emulation. Fortunately, there is still time for Sony to release an update for the systems which will bypass the time locking, but it is wishful thinking, it's just as likely that they won't release anything at all, so just keep that in mind when you go to buy stuff. This stuff is old, and I do understand why they've made the decision to close the stores down finally, I mean they've had a really good run, but there were also alternatives they could have used. They could have released an update for the PlayStation 3s, PSPs and Vitas that let them connect to the same store as the PlayStation 5. They could have also kept the service available on PC so people could buy things for their consoles on a desktop PC and then just download them on their systems. There are alternatives to just closing the store down entirely, and although some of them would still cost a little bit of money, it does make me think why they've just shut everything down entirely. As long as companies keep cutting support for these legacy systems and games, people will just be driven more and more to emulation and roaming, which is exactly what they don't want and what they keep complaining about all the time. I don't know about you, but I'd happily pay for ROM files from their official websites if they just listed the entire libraries for sale at £2 a ROM. And I think that even though these games are incredibly old, they should be supported and they should be archived so people can experience them the same way people can still read books from Tolkien and hear songs from Billie Holiday. Anyway, I hope that's given you a little bit more information on the upcoming store closures. I know this is a little bit different from my normal videos, but don't worry, there is some normal stuff coming soon and we're going to be taking a look at handheld horror games. Horror games for handheld system. There's a hell of a lot more than I thought there was when I started it, so it's going to be in like multiple parts. If you found the video interesting, please let me know in the comments below and consider leaving a like or a subscribe. I make retro gaming videos at least once a month, but I'm trying to hit that sweet sweet weekly upload goal. I also release chiptune music, original and covers on the channel all the time. And there's also a link to a completely free chiptune album in the description below, which I'm very excited about. Anyway, thanks for watching and take it easy breezy.